This video was created for and intended to be used by the students in FSC 239, Introduction to Forensic Science. I'm going to share with you the route to success through writing critically and growing as an academic writer. And for those of you who only care about getting an A in this course, well, I'll be going through what to do to get good marks on your assignments, but just know that you're also breaking my heart. Let's start by exploring what it means to write critically. Once you know the article, case study, or medium that you're going to be critiquing, you'll typically start a two-part process. Step number one, analysis. This is where you examine and break up the information into parts. You want to identify the main purpose, central claims, and conclusions, and find systematic answers that the article is trying to present. Don't be fooled though, you're not just reading to pick out information. You're trying to make judgments about how this material is argued. So once you identify the information, you can move on to the next step, evaluation. This is your time to really pick apart the material, asking questions like, how is the text argued? How is the evidence, the facts, the examples, how are they used and interpreted? How does the text reach its conclusion? Make judgments about the context. Who is the audience and when was it written? A textbook about eugenics from the 1940s is going to have a vastly different conclusion than a genetic biology article from 2020. Examine the evidence. Think about what type of evidence is used. Anecdotal evidence or hard data? From what sources is the evidence taken? Often you'll be specifically asked to assess the strengths and the weaknesses of an argument. And all of the previous questions will give you great insight into how good the author's argument is. You can also critically evaluate material by using multiple external sources that prove or disprove the facts presented in your article. These may include case reports, lecture notes, and peer-reviewed material like other articles or textbooks. If the majority of your sources disagree with your article, you can probably start to reweigh the opinion of the topic. Maybe the author got it wrong, or maybe they inflated their conclusions. Perhaps they've taken an unpopular approach that in fact makes a better scientific conclusion. There may be many reasons why academics disagree, but what's important is that they back up their opinions with facts and data. Now remember, trusting your gut may lead you in the right direction, but it's not enough. You always have to justify why something is right or wrong with credible data. And don't be afraid to disagree with the author. In great science, there's a lot of people arguing with each other, and the person who can prove the most generally wins. Some common mistakes that first-year students make in critical writing usually have to do with not taking a strong enough position for or against the medium. For example, if you're just planning to regurgitate information without explicitly stating its significance, then you're really just about as helpful as a photocopier. I mean, you're not answering the question, and or your answer is so vague that we can't really get any insight out of it. In other cases, you may have a valid point, but you don't have any evidence to back it up. So follow the instructions of the assignment and make sure you're not just throwing words at the page to see what sticks. So now you know how to write critically. I mean, you basically got this in the bag, right? Wrong. I mean, the rest is just putting words on paper, isn't it? Wrong. Uh, but, but I thought when we- Wrong. Wait, no, I went That is wrong. mainstream wrong. media wrong. nonsense. Wrong. There's a lot more to completing your assignments successfully than just the strength of your critique. In forensic science especially, we require a very specific format and standard that you may not be familiar with yet. I mean, by graduation, you'll be an expert. Assignment format. Formatting is a great way to get really easy marks. Use this video as a checklist to make sure you have everything you need. Now, if you're like me, you'll start off with your title page and you'll feel satisfied for putting down any words at all and then call it a day and, you know, go play Animal Crossing. In this course, that's not gonna fly. Mostly because we don't use title pages. Unless a professor specifically asks for one, don't waste your time and don't waste paper. What you should include are your name and student number in the top right corner and the top right corner only of every page, a page number, the correct font, only 12 point Times New Roman or Arial and only typed assignments will be accepted. Use 1.5 line spacing for the entire assignment, including the reference page. Use a default margin width of 2.54 centimeters or one inch. 
This is the default margin of Microsoft Word, so don't go changing it. And do not indent your questions. Print in black ink on standard white printer paper. You can print single-sided or double-sided. If your assignment is not an essay and has specific questions, do not include the question itself, but organize the assignment by question. Number the sections like 1A, 2B, and so on. Remember, we must be able to determine what the question was from your answer. Otherwise, you're not being clear. Answer all the questions using complete sentences. Referencing style. Just as important as the formatting, so is the reference style. You've all been provided with a referencing guideline on Quercus, so make sure you use it. You may be used to Chicago, MLA, or AAA formatting from high school, but in forensic science, we use JFS, or Journal of Forensic Sciences, formatting style. This means you won't be using footnotes or endnotes at all. Instead, you'll have a list of references at the end of your assignment on a separate page. In the reference section, the references should appear in the order in which the source appears in their paper, not by alphabetical order of the author's last name, like most other reference styles. Even I forget this important difference sometimes. All information that you use to make your point must be cited in your text. This includes journals, articles, lectures, videos, and more. Anything that presents an original idea that is not your own needs to be given credit. Failing to do this results in what we call academic plagiarism and is a serious academic offense. Content. Finally, you have a functional assignment. Your formatting is on point, your arguments are strong, what could possibly drag you down? If it's anything, it'll be your spelling and grammar. There are a lot of common mistakes that unfortunately make students lose marks, despite having a strong idea. Here are a couple examples. Your use of the word, however. People love to use however in their sentences. However, they use it incorrectly. Wrong. The correct way would be, people like to use however in their sentences. They do not, however, use it correctly. Another common mistake is starting a sentence with a conjunction. Words like but, and, because, also, belong in the middle of a sentence, not at the start. One more big one. The difference between its and its. ITS, with no apostrophe, refers to a possessive pronoun showing ownership. Its hair, or its ball. IT apostrophe S refers to a contraction, meaning it is, like it's a boy, or it's a ball. Run-on sentences are also something you may want to keep an eye out for. This is when you've made your point, but keep going, or you take forever in the same sentence to make a point. Most people try to expand their sentences to sound smarter, but in forensic science, it makes you sound like you're stalling and that you don't know what you're talking about. So keep it concise. Don't use direct quotes. These are fine for English papers, but they don't work in a scientific format. Don't use big words or flowery language. Your TAs and professors don't care about how graphically descriptive you can be or how many thesauruses you've read. They're waiting for you to get to the point. Quantity does not equal quality. If you're using the right terms and forensic language, you can be sure that you're being concise. Don't use first person like, I think this article is useless or I agree with the author. Use third person like, this article is useless because so on, or the author has made valid points. You will rarely, if hardly ever, be asked to write in first person. Do not use contractions. Those are combined words like don't, can't, won't, or y'all didn't have. Do not use casual language. Remember, the point of writing a critical argument is to be taken seriously and professionally, so save the casual language for sliding into DMs. Man guys, that's a lot of stuff that I've just thrown at you. And, and now that you've written your paper, how are you ever gonna make sure that you've got it all down? Well, this is where it comes time to edit, edit, edit. Use these handy tips to help you. If you want to see how clear your arguments and answers are, try to read the answers without looking at the question. Can you easily determine what question you're answering? Check your content. 
highlight portions of sentences that include examples and citations. Every answer should be supported by at least one example. Check your grammar by reading your paper out loud. Tripping over words usually means awkward phrasing, and if you get confused, then we'll definitely get confused when marking. If you run out of breath while reading a sentence, then you've probably got a run-on sentence going on there, and that sucker has got to be cut down. Well, that's about it. A few last pieces of advice for anyone writing an essay or assignment in the Forensic Science program would include Follow the instructions. Do not leave it until the last minute. It takes time to write and edit properly, and often you may end up changing some content along the way. Think critically while being concise, and edit, and peer edit, and edit again. Good luck and happy writing!